What a week it's been. Princess Catherine's uncle, Gary Goldsmith, has been speaking out since he entered the Big Brother house and he wants Harry and Meghan to have their titles removed. Well, he's obviously not the only one. But joining us now from London is royal commentator Josh Rom. Josh, great to speak to you again. I can't get over this Gary Goldsmith news. He's just speaking out about the royal family. What has he said so far? How much more is he going to say? I mean, to be honest, I don't think anyone can quite get over what Gary Goldsmith has been saying in the Big Brother house. Um, I mean, he, he previously actually spoke to the Sun newspaper ahead of his appearance, uh, but, but ahead of going into the Celebrity Big Brother house, where he was, of course, so complimentary about his, his, niece, the, his niece, the Princess of Wales. And we kind of got a hint about uh, his feelings towards Meghan Markle when he said that his niece was 100% not racist and he called uh, her and Prince William the saviors of the royal family. Um, however, on tonight's edition, of Celebrity Big Brother. I mean, he, he he spilt the tea. He threw it all out on the table. He, he accused Meghan of rewriting history, of creating drama that wasn't even there in the first place. He said that Prince uh, Harry was very comfortable originally around Prince William and, 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 uh, and, Kate Middleton when she was first in the royal family. Um, and, and then when Meghan came in, she shifted the dynamics. He said that he feels their title should be taken away. Um, he was also pressed on the whereabouts by multiple people um, from TV presenter Fern Britton and also Love Island reality star Ekin Sue, who also recently appeared on the US edition of The Traitors. And, um, when pressed on on Kate's whereabouts, he said that uh, he's not going to reveal uh, what condition she has. Um, it's up to her if she wants to reveal it. She has the platforms to do so. But he did say that he likes how she's putting family first. So we're getting a real insight here into uh, potentially the way that Princess Catherine operates. He says he said previously that she's hard to get hold of the best of times. But this information, I think, should be taken at least with a slight pinch of salt. Because, yes, he is... Uh, the uncle of uh, Princess Kate, uh, Princess Catherine. He is the brother of Carol Middleton, um, Princess Catherine's mother. However, he is the self-confessed bunkle, the bad uncle living up to <laughs> every single stereotype of the embarrassing uncle that there is. So I think a... everything that he says maybe should be taken with a slight pinch of salt. Yeah, what a guest to have in, in the Big Brother house. But how is it really being received? Because I'm sure a lot of what he's saying uh, really resonates with people in the UK, people right around the world. But then I think there are others that uh, feel that it could be quite distasteful that he's there potentially using uh, the ties he has to Princess Catherine to, to have a platform. Yeah, absolutely. And this is the guy that is apparently going into the house to say, I don't actually want to be famous. I just want to get rid of the misconceptions about me that have been going on in the press. Yeah, I kid you not, Gabriella. He literally said in his entrance VT on the program, hi, my name is Gary Goldsmith. I am uh, the uncle of Princess Catherine. And then he straight away, I kid you not, within the first three seconds, went on to reveal a royal story about how um, they're normal people and how he first met Prince William when he was making tea. I kid you not, it was that quick. So I think Gary himself is coming across like, oh, he, he is just there to, to spill the tea. He's building the platform. You know, of course, there are going to be doubts whether... Uh, 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 Carol Middleton and Princess uh, Catherine are going to even be watching this. We know for sure that this is definitely not what Princess Catherine needs right now. She needs to focus on her recovery. She needs to focus uh, from healing from that very serious abdominal operation with that undisclosed condition, whatever it may be. But what I think he's saying about 
Prince Harry and Meghan Markle is is really resonating because he mm. is saying it. Okay, yes, he knows Princess Catherine, and it might not be maybe the best coming from someone from her camp, so to speak, or close relative of her. But what he's saying does have some resonations amongst the public. He is just saying what the public is thinking, or at least what a lot of the public's thinking. And it, it just goes back to that point. Fair enough, you want to slate the royal family in a Netflix documentary. You want to go out and make your own content and, and, and do all the commercial stuff while slagging off the brand and live your truth. Okay, fine. But then why do you go to this event, that event, that event, that event being introduced as the Duke and Duchess of Sussex and then fighting for prince and princess titles for your children? That it's hypocritical. It's totally hypocritical. Look, watch this space. Gary Goldsmith is going to come out. My prediction is going to come out with a, a lot more lines that uh, people will be resonating because I think he's certainly not the only one that thinks that Harry and Meghan should be stripped of their royal titles. Um, but, look, mm. moving on, you mentioned that Princess Catherine really needs to focus on her recovery. There has been some miscommunication this week over the Princess of Wales' next public engagement after her mm. recovery. The British Army has reportedly removed a claim from its website stating that Princess Catherine would be attending Trooping the Colour in June. Um, what exactly happened here? Yes, yeah, so the Ministry of Defence basically said that Princess Catherine uh, will have a public engagement. She will be attending an event relating to the Trooping of the Colour on the 8th of June. However, it's very well known that the Royal Diaries, the Diaries of Official Engagements from the Royal Family, are released and confirmed by the Palace. And the palace did not confirm this event. The palace still to this day has not confirmed this event. Kensington Palace did not confirm her attendance at the Trooping of the Colour at the 8th of June. So the Ministry of Defence here jumped the gun, essentially. Um, no pun actually intended there, I beg your pardon. <laughs> but uh, the Ministry of Defence basically said that she was attending this event and now they've been forced to backtrack because the palace has actually refused to confirm whether she will be at this event. We do know that royal diaries are usually released up to eight weeks in advance, so there is still a little bit of time till we see any the palace uh, confirm any proper engagements um, or official engagements from their end with the princess as she continues to recover at home. Saying that, um, there is a lot of speculation around the Princess of Wales at the moment. You know, you you know that the palace has have said that they're only going to be commenting on significant developments as and when they feel fit to. We know that both Prince William and Princess Catherine are incredibly private people. They for whatever reason, do not want to disclose this medical condition that she has. And quite frankly, it's none of our business. Uh, she was snapped just this week. What we do know from those snaps released by TMZ is that uh, she is with her family. She was snapped in the passenger seat of a car being driven by her mother, Carol Middleton. So we know that she's well enough to uh, travel in a car, um, we know where she is. She's on the Windsor Estates continuing to recover. And these photos are really interesting because they reveal so much because they effectively quash all of these outrageous and wild conspiracy theories that we've seen on the internet. Bearing in mind as well, the Prince William spokesperson actually said that Prince William himself is focused on his work right now and not on social media. They actually felt the need to comment on this completely wild speculation. But these photos, I think, will actually backhandedly do a favour for, for the palace, because even though one could argue it's it might potentially be an, inv an invasion of the princess's privacy, what it does, it, it kind of eliminates any and all speculation where Kate is. We know that she is continuing to recover on the Windsor estate. She is spending time with her family. She's well enough to sit upright in a car seat. Uh, however, they nothing else has been revealed from these photos whatsoever. So one, it doesn't reveal anything, but it eliminates that vacuum of mm. speculation that has been building around the princess since the announcement of that serious abdominal operation.
Yeah, and there has been some discussion about whether the palace should have been more transparent. Maybe they should have um, released a photo so it, sh it wouldn't have had to have come from, from TMZ. But, look, we'll move on and, and talk about Queen Camilla, who's reportedly mm. set to take a break from royal duties. This I, I find quite astonishing because we've obviously got... Uh, King Charles having to step back from, from his royal engagements as well. Uh, Princess Catherine is recovering. Um, why is the Queen stepping back at this time? Simply, it's thought that uh, Her Majesty is simply burnt out. We know since His Majesty the King's uh, cancer diagnosis, she has been undertaking more roles, more duties. She's really stepped up to the mark in a big way, leading the pack of the royal family. In, it, it's basically the King has given her his express permission and not only that it's thought behind the scenes that he actually insisted that she takes a break uh bearing in mind it will be an incredibly short break she is due to be back um at the commonwealth day service on west uh in westminster abbey on uh, march the 11th i believe it is so this isn't going to be a super long break she's basically going to uh take take some time out to recuperate recharge the batteries it's thought uh that uh she 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 somehow found energy that she didn't know she had and when you think about it as well camilla is 76 um her majesty is 76 his majesty is 75 they are quite uh they they are getting on a little bit so it's only natural that they're going to feel tired but also, what I think it's important to say is, when it comes to His Majesty the King, yes, he stepped back from front-facing royal duties, from big events, from outings, from openings, from charity visits. He's still undergoing work of state. We've seen pictures of him um, at, at, uh, at uh, you know, at home uh, greeting. Just today, we saw him uh, greet the ambassadors of Mauritania and also Algeria. We also know that he had an audience with the Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau uh, via video link as well. So he is appearing in public. We know that he's met with Rishi Sunak in person. He met with uh, the Chancellor of the Exchequer, Jeremy Hunt, before the spring budget as well. So he has been seen, so to speak, and he is still undergoing the essential work that the country needs and, and arguably the Commonwealth needs as well, um, particularly, especially with Canada, um, where we know he's head of state of Canada as well. I'm assuming he is also having audiences with the Australian Prime Minister as well. We'll come on to that state visit, that planned state visit in a minute. Um, but uh, he is still being seen, at least in public, so to mm. speak. Uh, we're seeing him. He looks well. We know his treatment. He He's going into hospital for outpatient treatment. He's not undertaking any overnight visits there. So it's basically Queen Camilla has potentially submitted a request for annual leave, so to speak, which has been happily accepted by His Majesty the King. Um, and we know that she will be back uh, very, very soon for the Commonwealth Day service on March the 11th. We know that His Majesty will not be attending that service as well, but it's thought that he has recorded a, spe a, a, a special video message uh, for that occasion. Well, well-deserved annual leave for the Queen, I must say. Let's talk about those reports about King Charles potentially still coming to Australia despite his cancer mm. diagnosis. What's your information? Is, is it likely that it will go ahead? Well, it, it seems at the moment that all systems are going. I mean, I think what this shows, it shows that there is very much optimism within the palace at uh, the way his treatment's going, at the, at the way in which things are moving. So it was always planned that he would embark on a tour of the Commonwealth Pacific Nations in October and early November to mark his new reign alongside Queen Camilla. Uh, but the, the Prime Minister of Australia, Ant Anthony Albanese, has appeared to confirm that this royal tour is, is very much on the cards. He says that he's engaging with states and territories um, in, in planning this royal tour 
tour for options of a potential royal visit. Um, a government spokesperson said just in January just uh, that the Prime Minister enjoys a warm relationship with the King and looks forward to welcoming His Majesty in Australia later this year, also emphasising the warm and compassionate relationships uh, that um, His Majesty enjoys with Australia, uh, how His Majesty has been there to support Australia through some of its toughest moments, uh, through some of her toughest moments, and that Australia, of course, wishes His Majesty well. So it appears that this royal tour might be on the cards. We know that uh, we know that Prince William wanted to go uh, uh, for the major for the major sporty event, but wasn't able to do so due to royal protocol because His Majesty hadn't visited Australia yet. Uh, what we do know is that uh, King Charles and Queen Camilla last uh, visited Australia back in 2018 as representatives of Her Late Majesty the Queen at the Commonwealth Games. Uh, we know that uh, Her Majesty the Queen uh, made 16 state visits uh, to Australia throughout her reign, her last being in 2011. Um, I mean, that's the thing. It, 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 it is a real sign of optimism from the palace, especially I think it, it counters the reports of all the uh, you, 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 the early succession planning that we've been hearing. So this is, I think, a real sign of, uh, mm. of optimism from the palace that His Majesty the King is doing well. As I said before, he has been seen in photographs and videos at the palace, um, conducting audiences, conducting the business of the state. Uh, it's all systems go and it's looking it's looking this is a good sign yeah Josh you're a royal expert for a reason look at all your knowledge of the trips to Australia look finally I have to ask Prince Harry is reportedly the victim of revenge porn threats after a Las Vegas mm. adult worker told a newspaper she had compromising nude photos of the Duke of Sussex taken in 2012 um, if this is true I do feel really sorry for Prince Harry What's your read on this situation? Are we going to see the photos? I don't think we will see the photos because a spokesperson from OnlyFans has said that in order for this in uh, adult industry worker, her name is Carrie Royale, she's 52 years old, but OnlyFans have said that in order for her to release these new, new photos, these new, apparently according to uh, this woman who spoke to The Sun this week, uh, she has new graphic photos of Prince Harry in the nude, in the buff, as uh, she told the newspaper. But OnlyFans have said that she needs Prince Harry's permission in order to upload the photo. So if she was to try, I think OnlyFans would absolutely crack down on this. Listen, in this instance, I feel very sorry for Prince Harry. He was only 27 at the time. It was very, it was widely thought that he was uh, intoxicated at the time of this incident. This was a private incident. He was enjoying a holiday with pals in Las Vegas when he invited um, friends um, and uh, strippers up to this hotel room at the uh, Wynn Hotel in, in Las Vegas, on the Las Vegas Strip, um, back in 2012, um, when he played this game of strip billiards. So this is unfortunate. However, I think what this does do, it reminds the public this story of the fun-loving Harry. It reminds, it, it, it shows that Prince Harry was once a, a fun-loving, enjoyable, lovable, rogue Prince that we all loved and can relate to rather than this woke, freaky, unconscious bias rubbish that we've been hearing from him. Yeah, I agree with you. In this instant, I, instance, I should say, I do feel sorry for him that this has all been brought up again. But oh, you're right, it's brought back this sense of nostalgia. Everyone kind of misses the wild naughty boy, uh, naughty boy prince that he was once. once Gary was. Goldsmith's, and Gary Goldsmith's comments only emphasise that fact as well. They only emphasise the fact that, yes, Prince Harry back in the day was fun-loving. There was no drama. And actually, he accuses Meghan Markle of coming in and changing Prince Harry's outlook and effectively saying that he wasn't unhappy before she came in. And then, and then she kind of brought all of this out of him, unfairly so. Um, and he calls kind of what she did towards uh, Princess Catherine with the allegations of racism, saying uh, there were concerns about her baby Archie's skin colour. He says that they were very unfair throwing Kate under the bus. So I do, like you said, I feel very sorry for Prince Harry 
in this incident, um, in this instance, rather, that he may be subjected to this, that there are photos there. This is a worry that might be dangling over him, a shadow of his former life. He is a very different person now. He has matured. He's done amazing things with the, with the Invictus Games that he can be so proud of. But yeah. this is just another reminder of how much he has changed. That's right. Josh Rom, so great to speak with you. Thank you so much for coming on Power Hour. We appreciate it. Thanks so much for having me, Gabriella, as always.